So on a previous video, link in the description below, I had this issue. The Magic Smoke decided it was going to release from one of the components on one of the NESs. And it turned out that it was the bridge diode rectifier in the power supply unit had just decided to go. Don't know, I believe it might have been an issue with the power supply. Very odd though, because it's a 9 volt AC power supply. But when I've tried that power supply now in other NESs, very quickly it doesn't seem to power them on properly. It'll give you the red light, but that's it. So, as you can see, normally an NES isn't this easy to take apart. I've just left this knowing that I'm going to have to replace this component anyway. So this was all desoldered on that previous video. So this component handles the voltage as well as the RF signal and the component in. And as you can see there, that's the component that's gone. And it is a Toshiba 4B blah, 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 blah. Anyway, long and short of it, I had a look on the internet, tried to find that particular, the exact same one. It just seems to be an obsolete part now. You can't seem to get hold of it. There's somebody selling equivalents for about six, seven pounds, but that's for one diode. And again, to me, it just seems a lot of money. So that's what, eight, nine dollars um, just for one diode. So I had a little look on eBay and I managed to find what you need for this, or what this original component is, is a two watt, thousand volt, two amp, breech diode rectifier. So I had a look on eBay and I managed to find a pack of 10 for three pound 42, so about $5. And this component is a 2W10. It should do the job. So first things first, I just need to desolder the old one. So what I'm doing now, I'm just using a bit of solder flux on the solder braid. This just helps the braid soak up that solder so much easier, causes less damage. You can see there how well it travels up there now. You can use braid by itself, but it definitely does. And this is very good braid. It doesn't seem to go as well. Putting that flux on there definitely helps it. I'm hoping I don't have to desolder everything to get the printed circuit board out. I don't think I should have to. So I'm hoping I can just get this diode out where it is. And there it goes. So we'll just have a quick look at the board. Yep, that all looks good. And again, if we look on the back, we can see the four holes there. And that's the one that came out. It's in a bad way. So these are these new ones that I bought. A 2W10. And on these, obviously it's marked on the top of it anyway, what's positive, what's negative, what's AC. But you can see the positive leg is slightly longer than the rest, just in case that marker had rubbed off. And again on the board, what's quite handy is they mark off what is positive and what is negative. So just obviously bear that in mind if you do have to replace this component, just don't get it round the wrong way. Um, again, it, to me, it's surprising that this went, but again, we're talking a component from the mid 80s, so really capacitors, anything like that can go at any time. So as you can see there, the positives line up with a positive, the negatives line up with a negative, and then the ACs left and right there. So now I just got to solder this back into place. be handy to have something that actually uh, clamps and holds this device while I'm trying to do this but again I like a little bit of a dance with the components sometimes just give this a little snip off I 
because again the bottom of this case is metallic so they need to be really cut down below that point otherwise potentially they could short out on the shielding on the bottom there now just going to solder this back onto the main board again See that one there is uh, missing its pad, but again, I think I've got enough on there, so it's making a connection. And that pad there looks a little bit loose as well, but seems to be holding okay. So now just connecting up the power switch and the light switch, just going to put some power on it and see if this new component works. looking good so again right now we'll have the red flashing light because there's no cartridge in there so the next thing we're going to do is actually put a cartridge on there and see what we've got so this is Top Gun's second mission not working at the moment this could be the cartridge though probably a little bit dirty so just going to give this a clean out with a bit of surgical spirit here Again, could be using isopropyl alcohol, but surgical spirit was at hand. You can see how grubby that was, that uh, cotton wool bud as it come out. So I'm getting a little bit more out of it now, but we're still getting that flash in. So now I believe this is down to the console itself. So I'm just going to use some contact cleaner on here. So this will help loosen up any dirt that's on there. Just using the cartridge to uh, clean it a little bit more. That will just move any debris. And again, doing the same on the printed circuit board side as well. Seeing if that's going to help it. Just cleaning this with a bit of surgical spirit as well. The actual printed circuit board where it connects on. And then finally, I believe I used this one from another another NES that wasn't working, so I've just got to bend these pins down to make sure they're making a good connection. And that is perfect now. Now for this game, I thought I'd use my flight stick. So this Zuba flight stick wasn't made by Nintendo. I think it was licensed by them though. But as you can see, the amount I'm shaking that left and right, and if you notice, then bars don't seem to be going at all horizontal. So I think in a future video, this is going to be opened up and we'll just have a look. Fire buttons seem to be working. But with that, I will see you on the next one.